Yeah, so we started with wealth sutras. Then we, you know, went to the yogi point and the and wealth. How the yogi point determines wealth in your horoscope. Okay, and uh, now we have actually, you know, we have actually come to D eleven, which is known as the Labhamsha or the Rudra Amsha. Why D eleven? Because you know, the eleventh house is actually the house of wealth. Okay, the eleventh house is the house of wealth. And a microscopic examination of the eleventh house is the is the you know is the T eleven. Okay, so we can actually you know the D eleven can actually give us a lot of insights into the wealth potential of a you know of a native, so as to say. Okay, so just to you know just for an introduction, the D eleven is one of the sixteen divisional charts that we have along with the T one. Okay, so. Anyone who you know who wants to look at their chart or any software, which was mentioned yesterday in the you know in the which was mentioned on uh, Sunday in the introductory class on Vedic astrology, the D11 can be easily calculated using software. But we'll also try to have a look and as to how the D11 can be calculated manually as well. Okay, so the D11 it is the microscopic view of the eleventh house of gains. Okay, so the eleventh house is also known as the house of gains, right? the house of fulfillment of desires okay that is where your you know where income your incoming wealth comes from okay so as a result the d11 it is also known as labha amsha or rudra amsha okay the 11th house you know uh, is also known as harasthana harasthana means it is the seat of rudra okay and who is rudra he is the he is the god of thunderstorm he is the you know, he is the destructive he is the destructive form of shiva Okay, he is the destructive form of Shiva, and uh, Rudra. He was the one who disrupted the yajna of Daksha, right? Where his uh, first wife Sati, she was insulted, and you know she self-immolated herself, and thereafter Shiva took the form of Rudra, and he cut off the you know the head of you know, the head of Daksha, who was who was Sati's father. So that is just a mythology associated with it. Okay, now Rudra is also the Punisher. Okay, Rudra is also the punisher. He is the one who punishes us for all our bad deeds. Okay, for all our bad deeds that we have done since all the last lives, right? So Rudra, the other name of Rudra is Hara. Okay, and the eleventh house is, you know, being the seat of Rudra, it is known as Harasthana. Okay, and uh, since Rudra is the punisher, he punishes us by firing his trishul. Okay, Rudra punishes us by firing his trishul. So. the work of rudra that means the job of rudra is to fire his trishul to punish the native for all the past life actions that we have done or for all the bad actions that we have done and uh, which is the house of action the house of action is the 10th house okay just this is the basic the house of action the house of completing work is the 10th house so if you count 10 houses from the 8th house sorry if you count 10 10 houses from the 11th house okay just count uh, 10 houses from the 11th house so 11 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so you come at the 8th house okay so this 8th house is known as the house of punishment that is the reason you know we have done a webinar on uh, on understanding the 8th house and how this 8th house can you know can lead to death in certain cases because if the punishment is is too severe then rudra is actually throwing his trishul to kill you okay rudra is throwing his trishul to bring death to you so 10 houses from the 11th house brings us to the 8th house so 8th house is the house of punishment Okay, and uh, if you have done good deeds in the past, okay, if you have, you know, it's the you know, Rudra will not only punish you for your bad deeds, he will also reward you for your good deeds. So if you have done good deeds in the past, then that reward comes in the form of sudden inheritance. That is the reason you know, you know we have done, you know, we have done a series on the eight house where I showed how the eight house is connected in uh, with lottery winnings. Okay, how the eight house can you know help you to get a lot of inheritance, some unexpected gains, some unexpected money. So all of this is associated with the eight house, and it is Rudra who is you know who is firing his trishul to ensure that we are either you know we are either well punished or we are well you know congratulated for all the outcomes for all the deeds that we have done previously. All right. So uh, we also know that the second from any house will sustain that house. For example, uh, the second house is known as the house of food. Okay, the second house is known as the house of food. So the second from any house will sustain the house. So the D eleven is also known as Eka Dasamsha because it sustains the you know it sustains the tenth house. Okay, it sustains the tenth house. Right. Now uh, this D uh, eleven is actually the you know this is not my work of course. Okay, all the saints and sages they have you know, they have laid down uh, pretty much you know they have uh, laid down a lot of guidelines on how to you know how to 
interpret charts. Okay, they have laid down a lot of guidelines on how to inf interpret charts and things like that. Okay, so this uh, this D11 is actually the work of uh, Sri Shishadri Ayer. Okay, he was a very famous astrologer from the south. Okay, particularly uh, specifically from Bangalore. And what uh, Shishadri Ayer, Ayer says in his uh, book New Techniques of Prediction, he says that the D11 is a very important chart. Okay, it is very important chart because all of us are desirous to know about our status quo, about you know how much money we will make, right? And the D11, it has a span of three degrees. It's all about one's attainments by personal efforts, professional status, and uh, income. Because you know your income will flow in from two two parts or two aspects. Number one is your professional status, and number two, your personal efforts. Okay, you may be in a very good paying, you know, you may be in a high profile job, but if you're not putting that much of effort in that job, then you will not make that income. Right. So similarly, the D11 is also seen for promotions. It is also seen for demotions in the same profession. Right. And uh, here we are actually not uh, evaluating the salary, but the D11 is specifically helping us to evaluate the extra money. OK, the unearned income, right, the extra money that we earn apart from our salary, easy money, you know, windfalls like someone leaves us an inheritance and an elevation to a higher status without, you know, without hard work. These are all seen from the D11. OK. So the difference between the D10 and the D11 is that the D10 will actually help you to look at what karma you must do in this life. Okay, what position you must, you know, what position you must work at in this life to fulfill your karma. The D11 will actually tell you, you know, what salary you are deriving and what extra income you are deriving apart from your salary. Okay, so this is the difference between the D10 and the D11. The D11 will tell you what karma you are doing in this life. The D11 will tell you what salary you are getting, how much salary you are getting. Two people are working at the same position. They are, you know, their <clears throat> their amount of earning will not be the same. Someone will earn extra apart from his or her salary. Someone will have to stay satisfied only within his or her salary. So all these things are actually seen from the D11. Okay, and uh, just to, for the uninitiated, the D10 is known as the assumption. Okay. Uh, then uh, what will happen is that uh, suppose someone's profession or someone's uh, you know someone's status quo is not good. Okay. If someone is someone, you know, if uh, someone is having a bad D10, okay, someone is having a bad D10, then the profession will not be good. For example, he might have a very, you know, he might have a temporary position throughout his life. Okay, if the D10 is weak, then the person might never do a permanent job ever in his in his or her life. Okay, suppose you know, and uh, in a country like India, where we are seen, where the amount of respect is given according to our profession, right? Uh, in India, the respect that is given to people is according to their profession. This is unfortunate, but it actually happens, right? It actually happens. So if someone's D10 is weak, then, you know, the person might not get enough respect. Okay. The person might not get enough respect. So that is, that is one problem. Okay. That is one problem. But if the D11 is strong, the D10 may be weak, but if the D11 is strong, what will happen is, you know, financial stability will be there for the native. Okay, the people will not see it. The people will still think that you know the, the, the native is doing some permanent, you know, some temporary job. The native is not earning well. But in reality, the earnings will be very, very good. Okay, the earnings will be very, very good. And the native will always be on the side of profit. Why? Because this is the action of karma. The native, you know, if the D10 is bad, but the D11 is good, it means that the native has done some very, very good karma in his past life that you know, that God is or the divine or creator, whatever you choose to call it, that uh, God has decided that he must get income or he must get good income rather, even if he has not done very good karma in his, you know, even if he is not having a, having a sustainable job or a permanent job. Okay. So what happens is that in uh, D11, as you will see, Okay, the D11, as you will see, all the, Rashi, all the Rashis will start from Aries and in reverse order. Okay, I'll come to the part of, you know, of how you can calculate D11 manually. All right, so as I said, D10 represents earned income. Okay, so D11 represents the unearned income, like patrimony or inheritance. Okay, easy income, side income, you know, lottery, gambling, you know. You may be in a very, you know, you may be in financial doldrums and all of a sudden a rich aunt dies and, uh, and leaves you with all her property. So that is, that is the power of a planet, which is well placed in D11. Okay. And the, the gains, all right. The gains that are, you know, that come through the D11, they can come through us through very little or no effort on our part. Okay. So, you know, because, you know, as I said, D10 is the, is the house of job, your job profile. D11 is the gains. 
right? So these gains, they can come to us through very little or no effort at all. For example, if you are getting, you know, if you're inheriting the property of some rich aunt or uncle, or maybe our parents, we don't have to work for that, right? Suppose someone is winning a lottery of $10 million. No one has to work for that. Suppose someone has, you know, has won a, made a windfall in the, in the field of gambling. Okay, so that is the reason. So one thing, right? One phrase that can be associated with the D11 is the phrase called easy money. Okay, it is called easy money. And uh, because, you know, because investing in the stock market and other forms of investment, they are also a form of gambling. So this can also be, you know, this can also be seen through D11. Okay, and since we are using the term easy money, easy money will also represent scholarships. Okay, easy money will also represent grants that you are getting for your work. Suppose you are an astrologer who is, you know, who is involved with the research. Okay, and someone, some client who is very happy with your readings, maybe comes and gives you a lot of money saying that, okay, this is something that, you know, you must have. Now I'm giving it to, I'm giving it uh, from my end so that you can sustain your research. So these are all, you know, these are all uh, qualities that the D11 will represent. Okay, suppose that there is a strong planet in, uh, in D11 or a well-placed planet in D11, the Dasha or the time period of that planet can bring a lot of prosperity to the native. Okay. Uh, now let's see if we can, you know, if we can, uh, calculate the G11. Okay. Just hold on. Just hold on. Let me share my screen. All right. So see, this is the calculation. So the division of a sine of 30 degrees by 11 results, because it is the D11. So we are dividing 30 degrees by 11. We will be left with, you know, we'll be left with two degrees, 43 minutes. Okay. Because, you know, because a division in Sanskrit is also known as Amsha. Okay. The division in Sanskrit is also known as Amsha. So for calculating the D11, we are dividing 30 by 11. Okay. And if you are not interested in a mathematical part, you don't have to worry about it. You can just, you know, you can just uh, use a software. The software also calculate the D11. But it is, you know, it is good to know the, you know, know the basis of this, of this calculation. So you're dividing 30 by 11 and you are left at two degrees, 43 minutes. So now you are getting 11 divisions, okay? Because it is 11 amshas, so you are getting 11 divisions. So the first division is between zero degrees, zero minutes to two degree, 43 minutes. The second division is from two degree, 43 minutes to five degree, 27 minutes. The third division is from five degree, 27 minutes to eight degree, 10 minutes. So you are adding two, two degree, 43 minutes to each part, okay? So the fourth is eight degree, 10 minutes to 10 degree, 54 minutes. Then 10 degree, 54 minutes to 13 degree, 48 minutes. Then 13 degree 48 minutes to 16 degree 21 minutes, 16 degree 21 minutes to 19.5 minutes, 19 degree 5 minutes, 19 degree 5 minutes to 21 degree 49 minutes, 21 degree 49 minutes to 24.3 to 24 degrees 32 minutes, then 24 degree 32 minutes to 27 degrees 16 minutes, and again 27 degree 16 minutes to 30 degrees. So you are having 11 divisions. When you are dividing 30 degrees by 11, you are having 11 divisions, each having each division having two degree 43 minutes. So just remember this division. Okay, if you are, you know, if you are following the video and are trying to make the calculation, just take a screenshot of this because I'll be sharing an example chart to show you the calculation of T11. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. So I hope people can see this application. So this is the, you know, this is the, calculating part okay so this is the chart of bill gates okay any wealth you know, any wealth if you are doing a session on wealth and if you don't look at bill gates chart the session remains incomplete okay so this is the this is the chart of bill gates right just want to share the d11 just a minute
Okay, so just uh, okay. So this is the chart. Uh, this is the this is the Rashi chart, of course. Okay. So just um, just make a note of the eleven divisions that are there, and we'll start with each individual planet. Okay, we'll start with each individual planet. So look at the degree of the ascendant. The ascendant is twenty seven degrees nine minutes. Okay. So if you you know it is twenty seven degrees uh, nine minutes. So the ascendant it is you know it is in the tenth sign. It is in the tenth part, right? I'll just again come to the you know come to the divisions. Okay. So just uh, take a screenshot of these divisions so that as I can, you know, as I go along, you can make the chart, right? So the ascendant is 27, 27 minutes, something degrees. So it is coming in the 10th part. Okay. It will come to the 10th part of it, right? Now, just look at this chart. So the ascendant is 27 degrees, nine minutes. So it is coming to the 10th division. Okay. It is coming to the 10th division. Right, so it is coming to the tenth division. So now count reverse from Aries. Count, you know, ten from Aries in the reverse order. So it will be Aries in the reverse order. It will be Aries, then Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, Sagittarius, Rahu. Uh, sorry, uh, Scorpio, Libra, Virgo, Leo. Cancer. So 10th from counting, you know, counting 10 parts from Aries in the reverse order brings us to Cancer. So Cancer becomes the D11 Lagna for Bill Gates. Okay. Now, you know, now can look at the sun. The sun is, you know, is having 11 degrees 46 minutes. Okay. The sun is having 11 degrees 46 minutes. So it will be in the, it will be in the fifth part. Okay. Now count five, five signs reverse from Aries. So again, Aries, then uh, you have uh, Pisces. You have Aquarius, you have Capricorn, you have Sagittarius. Okay, the, so the sun will come into Sagittarius. Look at the moon. The moon is uh, 14 degrees, 40 minutes. Okay, so it is in the sixth part. Okay, so count six houses from Aries. So again, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, Sagittarius, and uh, this is uh, Scorpio. So the moon, it goes into Scorpio. Now look at Mars, it is having a 16 degree, 51 minutes. Okay, so it is in the seven part. So count seven signs from Aries, the Mars will come to Libra. Okay, Mercury, look at Mercury. Mercury is in the ninth, you know, it is, uh, it is uh, 23 degrees, 19 minutes. So it will come into the ninth part. So calculate nine signs in reverse order from Aries. So in that case, Mercury will go into Leo. Okay, look at Jupiter, it is four degrees, 32 minutes. Okay, Jupiter is four degrees, 32 minutes. So it is in the, you know, it is in the second part. So count two, two places away from Aries. So it will be Aries and then Pisces. So Jupiter will go into Pisces. Okay. Venus is in the 10th part, right? Because Venus has 26 degrees, 57 minutes. So it is in the 10th part and count 10 signs reverse from Aries. It will again go to Cancer, which is the Lagna of the D1, D11 chart. Okay. Saturn. It will be, it is 28 degrees, 20 minutes. So it is in the 11th part, count reverse you know, from Aries in, into, the, into the 11th house. It will be placed in Gemini. And Rahu, it is in the 10th part, which is again coming placed in Cancer. So now Rahu and Ketu, this is the peculiar thing about Rahu and Ketu. Rahu and Ketu, they are having the same degrees. Okay, so in D11, Rahu and Ketu will be in the same chart, in the same house. Okay, in D11, Rahu and Ketu will be the, you know, will be the, it will be in the same house. Okay, so because Venus is placed in the in the Lagna, okay, Venus is placed in the in the first house of the D11. So Bill Gates, he became the richest man in the world during his Venus major period, during his Venus Vimshottari Dasha. Okay, so similarly, Jupiter, it goes into the it goes into the sign of Pisces. Okay, it goes into the sign of Pisces, which is you know, which is its own house. So that Jupiter also gave a lot of wealth during its dasha. Okay. 
so this is you know this is this is how to calculate you know this is how to calculate the calculate the you know calculate the wealth of a person using d11 but now there are certain principles that we must use while using divisional charts so divisional charts there are 16 divisional charts they are known as sodasha varga sodasha is the word for 16, 16 and varga is the word for the divisional chart okay so we have to understand that any particular divisional chart is a microscopic view that means it is a very very detailed view of a particular area that is indicated by one of the houses in the birth chart for example the navamsha chart which is the d9 so the d9 is a microscopic view of the seventh house okay so similarly the d10 is the house is a microscopic view of the 10th house right so for example when we look at the marriage of a person or when we look at the relationship status of a person what happens is that we look at the factors which are influencing the seventh house or the seventh lord okay but if we go to the d9 okay if we go to the d9 then we can actually look at you know if we go to the navamsha we can actually look at how the you know how the marriage will be whether the person will be happy in that marriage whether the person will grow from that marriage okay whether the person will grow from that marriage or you know whether the whether the just a minute yeah so whether the person would be you know would be how where the spouse would be interested in okay the d the, the d9 can tell us where the spouse would be interested in in marriage the d9 can also tell us you know what will you desire from the spouse the d9 can also give us a detailed view of how the spouse will look like after the marriage so these are all the you know these are all the significant events or significant uh, things that we can find out from divisional charts okay uh similarly okay similarly while analyzing divisional charts okay when analyzing divisional charts we also have to consider that you know all the general elements of interpretation that are seen by look for to uh, that are seen in the in the rashi chart or in the lagna chart right so all the you know all the all the aspects of a chart analysis are also applicable in divisional charts okay and uh, i had mentioned there in the you no know, i had mentioned in the which planet is important in d11 i'll come to that prashanti okay and i've mentioned that you know if you if you are doing vedic astrology you must be you know you must be well versed in at least two dashas okay vimshatra dasha is followed by everyone other than that you must also know another dasha it could be narayan dasha it could be udu dasha it could be you know it could be any it could be the gemini chara dasha as well okay so this dasha will show the timing okay that is what a particular period and sub period is likely to bring for the you know for the native right and uh, you know in which area of life the divisional chart will you know will point to for example if you look at the d7 which is known as the sapta amsha it will show you show your experiences with children similarly the dasa amsha or the dasamsha it will show your experience in in the career and so on okay so any planet which is you know any planet which is there in a divisional chart it is very preferable or it is you know it is desirable that the planet should fall in the first house or the fourth house or the seventh house or the tenth house or in the fifth house or the ninth house because these are the most you know these are the kendra houses the first fourth seventh and tenth are the kendra houses and fifth and ninth are the you know are the trikon houses or the trine houses okay any planet which is there in the second house or the 11th house that will behave in a more neutral manner but if it is placed in a dushthana say in the third house or sixth house or eighth house or 12th house it is not considered to be desirable okay it is not considered to be desirable and the other thing to you know to understand is that because you know the d11 is is only you know one house of d11 is only 2 degree 43 minutes apart so what happens is that even if the birth time is off by more than 10 minutes then the d11 will also will also not be accurate okay so to analyze a chart using d11 it is very very essential that you have the correct birth time okay so correct birth time as i said you have to understand that generally your mother will give you the correct birth time but if your mother doesn't remember then before going for an analysis you should actually you know you should actually get a rectification of the birth time done by an astrologer and only then go for an analysis don't you know don't give a random birth time to the astrologer because then the astrologer would be you know would be giving out some wrong predictions and there are other astrologers if you don't have the birth time they will take 12 o'clock in the afternoon as the birth time that is also an extremely wrong approach okay 
that is also an extremely wrong approach so any so the correct way to go about an astrological prediction is to you know is to ask for a birth time rectification if you are not sure about the birth time okay so uh, prashant ji has asked one thing which is the most important planet in the divisional chart if any planet falls in the first house of any divisional chart it becomes very very powerful okay if any planet is placed in the first house of any divisional chart that means if the planet is in the lagna of any divisional chart it will be you know it will be very very strong to give results now by strong i mean that the planet must have a source of strength okay the planet must have a source of strength and what are the most powerful sources of strength number one is exaltation that means the exaltation means highest happiness okay so all the planets will have their own exaltation points for example the sun will be exalted in aries moon will be exalted in taurus jupiter will be exalted in cancer saturn will be exalted in libra mars will be exalted in in capricorn and so on then there is the concept of mula trikona mula trikona means it is a place where the planet obtains directional strength okay so mula trikona suppose you know the mula trikona of uh, sun is is aries okay it is the same as the exaltation point similarly the mula trikona of uh, saturn is uh, you know is aquarius okay the mula trikona of mars right and the mula trikona of mars is scorpio so in that case you know in that case if a planet is falling in the mula trikona sign in any divisional chart it becomes very very powerful then there is the concept of parivartan okay what is parivartan parivartan means if if one planet is placed in the if two planets are changing signs for example suppose venus is placed in in pisces and jupiter is placed in taurus that means jupiter is placed in venus house and venus is placed in jupiter's house so they are exchanging signs that is the no that is the concept of parivartan similarly suppose moon is placed in uh, say moon is placed in leo and sun is placed in cancer that is an example of parivartan so what is happening is that the each the two planets are exchanging their signs and this becomes a very you know a very big source of strength then there is vargottama a vargottama is a concept that people think is associated only with the navamsha but it is not the case okay vargottama can happen with any divisional chart what is the meaning of vargottama suppose a planet in the d1 is in the fifth house then in any divisional chart if the same planet goes to the fifth house it becomes vargottama okay <clears throat> for example again let's take an example suppose uh, in in someone's chart mars is in aries okay mars is in aries in d1 in d9 mars goes to you know goes to aries again so that is vargottama okay then there is directional strength which is known as digbala okay directional strength means uh it is both it is both prashant ji okay it is both right some will say that you know similar houses will also mean bhavottama but uh, vargottama is a case to both okay similar houses as well as similar rashis then comes directional strength directional strength means uh, the planet is you know is getting uh, is uh, you know is ready to give you results in some particular houses for example uh, the first house gives directional uh, the in the first house jupiter mercury and surya they get directional strength in the fourth house moon and venus get directional strength in the sixth house rahu gets directional strength in the seventh house too rahu gets directional strength again saturn gets directional strength in the in the seventh house okay mars gets directional strength in the 10th house sun also gets directional strength in the 10th house okay k2 gets directional strength in the uh, in the 12th house okay k2 also gets directional strength in the 8th house so these are the you know these are the directional strengths of the associated with the planets okay so as i said uh, these are the you know these are the important conditions exaltation then a planet being in multricone or then or in its you know in its own house then uh, planets two planets ha having a parivartan with each other then vargottama then di directional strength or digbala and finally it comes to nicha bhanga okay what is nicha bhanga nicha bhanga means if a planet is debilitated okay if a planet is debilitated for example the moon it debilitates in scorpio and if mars is either placed in scorpio or mars is exalted in capricorn then what happens the planet gets nicha bhanga okay this is known as the cancellation of debility but there is a there is a you know there is a trick in interpreting nicha bhanga for example if a planet is nicha bhanga suppose i'm just taking an example suppose moon and mars they are together placed in cancer so mars is debilitated in cancer but because moon is placed also placed in the house of cancer so moon is bringing mars out of debilitation moon is actually helping mars rise above debility okay so this is known as nicha bhanga now there is a thing with nicha bhanga the issue with nicha bhanga is that 
the planet which is rising from deviation that planet will give a lot of imp that planet will give a lot of growth during its dasha okay but a planet which is helping the other planet to rise in you know to rise from debility that planet will be destroyed that means that dasha will be terrible okay again for example suppose jupiter it is getting debilitated in capricorn so jupiter is placed in capricorn and saturn is also placed in capricorn so saturn is giving nature bhanga to jupiter so that means jupiter will give excellent results during its dasha although it is debilitated but cancer although it is placed in uh, sorry uh, uh, saturn although it is placed in in its own house of capricorn it will not give so good results in its dasha so this is the principle in you know, this is the principle in interpreting the nature bhanga condition okay then all the graha yogas for example gaja kesari gaja kesari is a condition where moon and jupiter are in kendras to each other okay gaja kesari yoga and all the other good yogas or the bad yogas they should also be you know equally seen in the divisional charts okay then uh, you know a functional malefics it is ideal that they should be you know to give good results in the uh, sorry in natural malefics to give good results in the divisional charts they should be debilitated okay and natural benefits they should be exalted right so that is you know these are all the you know these are all the influences that must be analyzed before judging a divisional chart for example suppose uh, the strong influence of jupiter on a planet in a divisional chart will significantly increase its ability to bring beneficial effects even if it is in a bad house for example say venus goes into as i said the bad houses are 6 3 6 8 and 12 so suppose venus goes into a bad house in the divisional chart suppose venus goes into the 8th house in navamsha it means the person would be you know would be interested in having you know having physical relations outside the marriage but suppose jupiter is aspecting that venus then the person can you know the the astrologer can say that although the temptation will be there the person will not fall for that temptation okay so this is one way how you can you know how you can analyze a divisional chart okay similarly suppose two planets are very very you know suppose two planets are having a sambandha or having some kind of relationship in the divisional chart then the period and the sub period of those planets can also prove to be very very beneficial or very very bad for the you know for the native okay so that is you know that is that is how you can in that is how you can analyze divisional charts any questions till this point Okay, just go for the chart analysis. Devarshiji, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Hi, hi. Yeah, today I'm reaching you by phone, so sorry. Not no internet. <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. Um, I, the the verb that was very helpful. The explanation of the, you know, different strengths. Um, you said multi 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 component is direction. Multicona is multicona, multicona, yeah. multicona, yes. So I thought Digbala was directional strength. So can you explain? No, no. Digbala is Digbala is directional. The house. Digbala is directional. The Baba. Digbala is the directional strength, but Multicona is when the planet is ready to give you results. Is red is what? Lower? It is ready to give you results. Okay. So. Multicona. i'm saying yeah. that multricona is a condition where the planet will be placed in its own house and it is you know it is willing to give you results there is no denial of results from that planet so because tik bala like i understand that you're saying like first house is for uh, guru and buddh and fourth house tik bala is tik bala fourth house yeah. is for moon and and uh, moon and venus it's not yeah, it's, for guru yeah it's clear no i understand it's then very clear yeah you said that but how does multra chakona differ than from the digbala multra chakona is a condition see digbala is you know is when the planet is gaining strength the location the, it is it is the gain mm -hmm. of strength okay it is the gain of strength that means initially the planet it is you know it is like picking up speed you, know, you are you are going okay, you are okay. driving and you see a clear road and then you suddenly accelerate so that is the meaning of digbala okay okay got you tiki and uh, multricona means you are you are reaching a place to meet some person expecting to get paid or maybe expecting some help and the person is willing mm -hmm. to help, but you it's you know it's about reaching that person that is the meaning of multricona so is is digbala the like baba location and multricona is is that the degree 
no 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 digbala happens due to houses okay due to no, houses no. Due to the due to the houses, yeah. digbala happens due to the houses. Mulo trikona happens due to the rashis or the signs. Acha, acha. Okay, okay, it's, okay. It's it's due to the rashi. It's in in the kundali. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's very helpful. Then I think someone also asked this question about vargotama. Mm -hmm. Um, the raha is in the same. Um, you, Vargotama is a condition the where the yeah where the graha is in the same sign or the same house as the you know as the planet in the in the in the D one, okay. Okay, so it it can be both same. It sign can be both. It can be both. Matches. But some people or some traditions they will say that if the planet is also in the same sign and sorry in the same house, it is known as Bhavotama as well. So the word Bhavotama will also come in here. Okay, is one more popular or more believed like the traditional Vargotama is same house? It is same house, yes, it is same house. Okay, but you're saying here that it's also the same Rashi. Yeah, yeah, it is also the same Rashi. It's also the same Rashi, but traditional, you know, traditional astrology will use that as, as Bhavottama. Okay. And uh, some modern day paramparas will also use the word Bhavottama very frequently. But take that as, you know, suppose I'll just give you an example. Suppose in the D1, Venus is in Cancer. Okay. In the D9, Venus goes to Cancer. That is how that is that is Virgo Uttama. So again, in the D1, suppose Venus is in the 10th house. In the D9, Venus also goes to the 10th house. That is also Virgo Uttama. Okay. And both of these are from um, BPHS. Yeah, yeah, both of them are from BPHS. But BPHS gives us that alternative, okay. the use of the word Bhavottama as well. Say that one more time, the last part. Bhavo, uh, bhavo Uttama. It is known as Bhava Uttama. Bhava Uttama. So Bhavo. Uh, like Baba, like house. Yeah, Bhava is house. Uttama means in the most optimal condition. So Bhava Uttama. Bhava Uttama. Okay, thank you, thank Yeah. You. Yeah. All right, let's uh, look at a few charts in that case. Okay, so this is the chart of Christopher Reeves. Okay. So look at the, I've just placed all the charts together so that it becomes easier to understand. Okay. So he was an actor, right? So he was cast by Hollywood in the role of Superman and these movies were huge box office successes, right? And uh, look at this Venus. Look at this Venus in, uh, in D11. Okay. It is placed in its own house and it is, you know, it is aspected by the ninth Lord, right? So it is forming a very good quality Dhana Yoga. And it is, you know, it is also beautifully look at, you know, look at, uh, look at how it is exalted in the, you know, in the ninth house of D11. Right. So now if you look at Venus in the D1, so we just looked at Venus, how Venus is beautifully placed in the, in the ninth house of exaltation and that Venus major period made him very, very wealthy. But if you look at Venus in the D1, you don't see Venus giving, you know, although, you know, although Venus is Digbala, you don't see Venus involved in a lot of Dhana Yogas. Okay, you don't see Venus in a lot of Dhana Yogas. So what happens is that Venus, which is actually exalted in the, you know, in the D11, is giving him very good results during its Dasha. Okay. All right. Andy Murray. So tennis legend. So look at his, uh, look at uh, his chart of both D9 and, uh, sorry, D1 and uh, D11. He earned a fortune of over 61 million as a top tennis professional during his Venus major period. Right. So it is the, you know, look at the, look at Venus. It is the 10th Lord, which is in the ninth house. Okay. So it, you know, it, it is a good Raja Yoga. Of course it is good Raja Yoga, but it is not a Thana Yoga here. Okay. Venus in the, in the D1 is giving him good Raja Yoga because it is the 10th Lord placed in the ninth house. But so that Venus, it is actually showing his success and status. But then look at Thana Yoga. Look at the Thana Yoga formed by Venus in, you know, in a D11. It is exalted in a Kendra. Okay. So just from the, you know, just from the D11, you can actually see how a person can become wealthy if a planet is well placed in its, you know, in its own house or in its exaltation house. All right. George Clooney. So all the movie stars, they will have one feature prominent. Okay. They will either be born on a Saturday or Saturn will be very well placed because Saturn is the Karaka for cinema. Okay. 
this is one important secret i'm sharing with you all saturn is the karaka for cinema people will say it is venus it is not venus it is saturn all right it is saturn i just want i'll not answer the why what do you want what if venus is exalted in the third house in d11 see third house is not a good house prashant ji okay third house is not a good house so what will happen is that the wealth will come after a lot of efforts okay the wealth will come after a lot of efforts because the third house is efforts so it will make you you know it will make you grind a lot before giving you the wealth all right so saturn you know as i said saturn plays a very very important role in the in the charts of all movie stars you would either be born on a saturday or they will actually you know they will actually have a very good saturn in a dhana yoga or in a you know in a in a wealth uh, in a raj yoga okay so look at saturn in the chart in the in the chart of george clooney so it is not very well placed in the d1 okay but during his saturn saturn period of vimshottari dasha he and his partners they managed to create some tequila brand that you know that sold for almost 700 million dollars in cash and uh, they were also paid another 300 million depend you know as advance depending upon future sales right so look at this saturn in the d11 although it is placed with mars okay it is placed in a you know it is a uh, it is placed in a in the fifth house and it is having a mutual aspect with the sun so in the in the in the seminar on wealth sutras we had discussed how a connection between the fifth and the eleventh house can make one very very wealthy so this fifth house saturn in the fifth house is making a connection with the eleventh house where the eleventh lord sun is placed okay and look at how beautifully this second lord is actually joining this combination right so mars is also aspect the second lord is also aspecting the eleventh lord right the second lord is also aspecting the eleventh lord so two powerful dhan yogas which came in the saturn saturn period okay all right so these are two charts i'm sharing this is uh, this is the chart of chris weir and this is the chart of colin weir okay so these they are a lottery winning couple okay they are a lottery winning couple so just uh, uh, the 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 right yeah the, this uh, thank you for sharing that little gem of saturday and saturn um for it to be well placed is that in the kundali or it could be in any it could be for, or only for the profession, kundali for profession for profession it has to be if it is not no. placed it is if it is not well placed in the d1 it has to be well placed in the d10 okay otherwise you cannot become d10? an actor you cannot become an actor if it is okay. not well placed in the d10 okay but for the wealth is it d1 and d11 then for wealth just d11 will be sufficient but it can still give you know still have wealth giving combinations in mm -hmm. d1 as well okay because all the wealth sutras that we had studied is the first part of the webinar on wealth so all of the all of the combinations were seen from the d1 were seen from the d1 rather okay okay, okay. So why i'm okay. why, so what i'm stressing on what i'm stressing on is that even if a planet is not well placed in d1 but it is very well placed in d11 it will still manage to give you wealth in the during the dasha Okay. Okay, but for famousness, if you said D one or D ten or born yes, on a Saturday, yes, yes, yes. Oh, G G. Okay, so not me. Chris Wire and a uh, Colin Wire. So you know, this is a husband a wife chart. Okay, Chris Wire is the wife, right? So just uh, look at the two charts. Maybe you can take a screenshot of Chris Wire, and this is Colin Wire. okay you just take the wife's chart and and then come to the husband's chart so look at the wife the uh, the wife's chart the vimshottari dasha sequence was venus saturn saturn okay and look at the condition of these two grahas in the d11 right so this venus is in the lagna okay it is in the lagna but it is debilitated right venus is in the lagna but it is debilitated and as a result it get, but look at what it is happening is it is getting the aspect of jupiter okay it is getting the aspect of jupiter right and this jupiter is also debilitated but this debility actually gets cancelled because it is in a parivartan with saturn okay the debility of jupiter is cancelled because it is going it is having a parivartan yoga with saturn now the sub lord saturn okay the you know the antardasha lord saturn it is well placed in the seventh house it is digbala okay so it has got two sources of strength it is anyways exalted okay it is a 
<coughs> and it is you know it is uh, you know it is also placed in the seventh house that means it is getting big bala so what happens you know during venus saturn saturn this lottery was won okay this lottery was won it was around 500 million dollars of lottery okay now look at the husband chart okay look at the husband chart colin we are so when they won the lottery the husband was running the mahadasha of sun and the antardasha of saturn the pratyantar dasha of rahu okay so what is happening the d11 the d11 lagna is capricorn and look at the sun it is very well placed in the first house as i said any planet which is placed in the first house of any divisional chart it becomes very very powerful okay the antardasha lord saturn is not well placed okay but it is getting the influence of benefix okay now as i said you know as i said if uh, for the correct assessment of d11 the birth birth timing needs to be very very accurate so i've taken this you know i've taken this birth timing from astro bank data but if i you know if i just pull back the birth timings by around 12 minutes what happens is the d11 lagna becomes aquarius okay so as a result what happens this uh, sun it will get placed in the 12th house if the d11 lagna becomes aquarius then sun will be placed in the 12th house okay and saturn becomes a lagna lord right saturn becomes a lagna lord so then also the same con condition faces okay then also the same condition comes up but i will not you know i will not uh, say that aquarius will be the d1 lagna because he got his you know he won this lottery in the major period of the sun because as i said if aquarius is the lagna then sun would be placed in the 12th house it will be badly placed in the 12th house so such a badly placed planet will not you know will not give good results during its dasha okay so that is the uh, that is how you you know you have to uh, you have to you need to have some you need to have your birth time as very very accurate if you want to make any predictions with the t11 okay okay so killian bayford so she was a scottish woman again this is a case of case of lottery winning okay i don't have her husband chart but she had won around 150 million euro dollars on uh, august 10th 2012 and uh, they became that lottery win it made them the second highest you know second highest that lottery win was the second highest lottery win in the history of the united kingdom okay it happened during her jupiter saturn period and look at how jupiter and saturn are placed in t11 okay jupiter is debilitated but it is getting cancelled you know the, its debility is getting cancelled by saturn okay and look at saturn it is not only exalted it is also digbala so it is also gaining a lot of strength all right then as i said d11 it also represent inheritance okay so lord byron let's see so lord byron he inherited a lot of you know a lot of uh, all his you know all his property during his saturn major vimshottri dasha that means saturn mahadasha and look at saturn it is well placed in the in the mool trikona of d11 so this answers you know this answers prashant ji's question okay venus is exalted but in the third house so saturn although in the third house but it is still in mool trikona so it gave him good results okay so inheritance that means his father must have passed away so as i said the results will be there but after a lot of struggle okay and look at you know the, during this time the antardasha was that of the moon and look at moon the moon is under the influence of two exalted benefics okay the moon is under the influence of two exalted benefics right so other you know other grahas suppose mars is also gaining strength okay then uh, jupiter is exalted so other venus is in digbala moon is in digbala so all these other grahas are also you know are also are also well placed in the t11 all right next there is duke so there is duke he inherited you know he inherited his fortune in the major period of her uh, i'm sorry doris duke uh, yeah she inherited his uh, her made her you know her fortune in the major period of of uh, of surya mahadasha right and look how surya is placed it is placed in a kendra house and it is aspected by jupiter and the uh, antardasha was that of mercury look at mercury it is placed in its own house and it is being influenced by jupiter okay and look at the d9 uh, sorry t11 it contains uh, you know it contains venus as vargottama and other planets are also placed in good dignity okay all right barbara hutton so again a case of inheritance so look at the d11 all the natural benefits they are exalted and the lagna lord saturn is in the lagna 
Rahu, it is, you know, it is giving the results of Venus. Okay. And what is Venus? Venus is the exalted fifth lord. In a mutual aspect at an exalted ninth lord. Oh my God. So a connection between the fifth and the ninth house. Okay. And uh, she, during that period, she had inherited a fortune which was close to a billion. Okay. And then the other periods that followed were of Jupiter, Saturn and Mercury. All these are extremely well placed in her D11 and she remained wealthy throughout. Okay. Okay, last one. Gloria Vanderbilt. So, look at the birth chart of Gloria Vanderbilt. They are well placed, right? All the, all the grahas, almost all the grahas are well placed. Jupiter gets its directional strength in the first house. Look at the Lagna Lord Sun. It is Varguttama. Okay. Mercury as the second and eleventh lord is an exchange with the ninth lord Mars. And it was, you know, he, she inherited her huge fortune during her Venus period. Okay. So that's it for me for this session. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them. Okay. Okay. So I don't see any questions coming in. All right, then. Uh, thank you everyone for, for joining in this session. The recordings would be available by tomorrow on YouTube. Devarshi Jay, can yeah. I ask one question? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, thank you. So this is, um, you know, definitely shows what you're, you know, wanting to teach us today about the divisional chart of D11 and a well-placed planet for wealth. Um, my question is, is there something in this, if this is just showing wealth, I think my question is on a, on a karmic level, does it show, I guess either, I guess my question, does it show something of what that person should do with that wealth? Uh, that would be seen from the D9. Okay. That would be seen from the D9. Okay. Because, you know, D9 is how you use your resources. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So suppose, you know, mm -hmm. suppose the, for example, say the fifth lord of D1 is actually exalted in D9, then the person would make very good use of his or her resources. You know, mm -hmm. the fifth lord mm -hmm. of D1 mm -hmm. is, you know, is in a bad house in D9 or badly placed in D9, the person would spend it away his or her resources. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> D9 is also known as the Bhakya Amsha. It shows your Bhakya. Okay, resources can be had or cannot be, you know, resources may be inherited or may not be inherited. They may be available or may not be available at the time of our birth. But at the end of the day, you know, if you are, you know, if you are, if you have a good D9, you can you'll actually make very good use of resources. And suppose you have a very bad D1, but a very good D9, what happens is that you will create your own resources and put them to good use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah, got it. What right. about, is there something, is yeah, there yeah. something behind, I think I'm asking more. Oh, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Please tell me. Yeah. So like, let's say we talked about Bill Gates. We talked about George Clooney. We talked about the Vanderbilt. Um, is there something, my question is, is there something in a chart, whether it's the D1, the D9, the D10 or the D11, that shows, so this person gets wealth, great, they hit the jackpot, but the karma behind that wealth of like how they, I guess how they should use it or why it came to them in this lifetime. See, the thing is that wealth will actually, all the wealth that you are receiving, whatever wealth is there, whether you consider it to be the wealth of knowledge or the wealth of resources, all wealth is because of your past life karmas. Okay. Right. You cannot have wealth if you, you know, if you don't, if you have not done good deeds in your past life. There is this famous story of, you know, of Sankaracharya when he, when he, Adi Sankaracharya, when he, you know, when he, when he had met a lady who was stricken by poverty and he had composed that right. Kanadhara Stotram and Lakshmi was forced to appear and uh, he asked Lakshmi or he requested Lakshmi to, you know, to make this lady wealthy. And Lakshmi said that she has not done any good deeds in her past life. So how can I give her wealth? So at right. the end of the day, what it means is all the wealth that is coming into you. Okay. 
some wealth of course will be obtained by you know by your hard work some wealth will be you know will be obtained all you know, out of the blue out of all of a sudden so all wealth is actually due to your past karma okay past good past life good karma and that is actually seen from the fifth house the d5 okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the d5 is the house of purva punya how much you have you know how much how much good deeds you have done in your in your past life that will actually determine the amount of wealth in your future life that is the reason the d5 the connection of the fifth lord and the 11th lord in any chart is very very important to show the wealth potential so if you know if the if the fifth lord and the 11th lord are anyways connected then it shows that the person must have done very good karmas with regards to wealth for which you will get those get that wealth but how we you know what how he utilizes that wealth after getting it that will again be seen from the navamsh uh -huh. okay okay so prashant ji has uh, has to say my mother has jupiter in cancer in the fifth house okay so maybe that is the reason she got a uh, you know she got you that is one thing okay you are her, oh. you are her wealth right so, so children are our you know our our biggest wealth isn't it that is that is how we will you know how we leave behind a portion of ourselves on this earth so children are our biggest biggest wealth so obviously Did you say that D D five and D eleven are connected, or the fifth? No, no, I said the fifth thousand eleven. Fifth thousand eleven. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't see any more questions coming in. Then. Okay. All right. So next class we will be having a you know we'll be having a session on Ashtak Varga, on how to read Ashtak Varga in the chart and how to make use of Ashtak Varga. We'll take a few examples, right? And why Ashtak Varga becomes so very important. Ashtak Varga are the numbers that you will see in any you know in any if you are calculating your chart by any app, you will see the numbers that are there in any kind in all the twelve houses. That is Ashtak Varga. All the planets will contribute. Except Rahu and Ketu, so in the next session we will actually have a you know have a look at how Ashtakvarga, what Ashtakvarga is, and you know how you can use it to enhance our predictions. Okay. All right, then uh, the recordings should be available by tomorrow. Thank you everyone for joining in, and yes, I hope to see all of you in the next class on Sunday on Bay on Bay Digital Lodge. Happy Akshaya Tritya. Yeah, thank you Happy so much, Leah. Thank, thank you. And to everyone, to everyone, yeah. all our students. Yeah, I also In wish India, all of you USA. Uh, happy Akshaya Trithiya. Make a good investment in knowledge because knowledge is the only thing that is Akshaya. Akshaya means something that cannot be taken away from you. Okay. Akshaya means it is the opposite of Shaya. Shaya means something that gets eroded. Akshaya means something that cannot be taken away from you. And knowledge is something that cannot be taken away from you. Okay. So whatever you have gained from this session will always remain to you with you. It cannot, it can never be taken away from you. Okay, and this knowledge will be carried forward to the next birth as well. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. It was really wonderful interacting with all of you. Uh, I hope to see you. I hope to see all of you on Sunday. Namaste, everyone.